to the SEC Championship Preview Show presented by T-Mobile. In just four days, Alabama and Georgia will be facing off right here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia for the SEC Championship. And for the first time in a long time, Alabama is the underdog. And these teams have gone at it three times in the last 10 years, including this season. Bama the underdog. Christine Williamson and Jason Fitz hold it down for you. Uh, I want to talk about something because, like I said, Bama is the underdog, and it's the first time since 2015 that that has been the case. Are you at all surprised? No, I'm not surprised based on the way this year has played out, right? Like, watching the games every Saturday, we keep waiting for things to click and have Alabama be Alabama. It just hasn't looked easy. I mean, I know that we all want to excuse the Iron Bowl and say, hey, anytime you play a rival, it matters, and I get that. But does it? When, you, when you're taking on an Auburn team that you're clearly better than and your offense looks like that, and I keep thinking about the number of sacks. I think it was seven sacks yeah. in that game for Auburn. And I'm thinking, boy, if Auburn feasted like that, it's going to be Thanksgiving for the Georgia defensive line. So I'm not surprised because clearly the best team in college football this year has been Georgia. Then there's this massive gap, and two, three, yeah. and four are all fighting for that next level. Exactly. It's a very scary thing to go up against Georgia's defense, and we're going to talk about it with our friend Harry Lyles Jr. Because me and Harry actually saw this defense live, and I remember there were multiple times throughout the game that we looked at each other and we were like, what the heck? These are some grown men. So how good is this Bulldogs defense? You know, they're historically great. And I know we could, like, point to that statistically, but, Christine, like you said it, right? Remember that week it was against Arkansas. We were in Sanford Stadium, and we were sitting there next to each other just kind of like, are they allowed to do this? <laughs> like, is, is this legal? It, it was that dominant. The game was over before everybody could sit down in the stadium. So, it, it, again, like this team, I believe since 1979, Texas, Georgia has allowed only 17 points or less to all 12 of its opponents. And when you have a defense like that, you know, a lot of people talk about Georgia's offense. When you have a historically great defense to where you don't really have to worry about that side of the football, that says it all right there. I mean, Harry, I think that's funny, too, when you're talking about that, because I remember going into the Tennessee game, Josh Heupel running this big uh, pace offense. The flu was uh, running through the Georgia defense. There was this arg argument at the time that maybe they, we'd see the, the crack in the armor for Georgia there, but we haven't. Nah. You know, we talk about recruiting all the time. I know we have other stuff to get to, but, like, at some point, don't we have to, to credit Georgia the way they've recruited? Because we talk too much about the quarterback position. Position, they flat out recruited a bunch of beasts that have grown that have turned into grown men in this process. 100%. I mean, the the place that Georgia is at right now and you know, we see all these big contracts going out to head coaches right now uh, and there might be one that goes out right now while we're going on here, but Kirby Smart has Georgia in a place where now we can expect them to reload in a similar way that Alabama has been able to over the handful of years here. So credit to Kirby Smart and that recruiting that they've got going on because in terms of next man up, Georgia's really got nothing to worry about. Wait, 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 just call, wait you're giving us a scoop? Harry, you know, got, like, Harry got, got a scoop? Some inside information. Maybe we got a little ice cream scoop, Harry? <laughs> nah, no. <laughs> Oh, wow. Go ahead, Christine. Okay. Let's know. talk about the quarterback situation because obviously <laughs> Bryce Young is going to have to have the game of his life if he's going up against this defense. And he doesn't have the same weapons that, like, Mac Jones or even, like, Tua had. But what do you think that Bryce Young is going to have to do in order to execute and possibly give his team a win? He's got to hope that his offensive line plays a little bit better. That was a tough performance that they put up against Auburn. But look, he's got all the tools that he needs to succeed. I, I think when it comes to him, you know, you can look at his stats and he's put up the numbers as a sophomore that we saw out of Mac Jones last year. We saw them out of Tua for two years in, during his tenure at Alabama. He just needs to play his game, just, you know, try not to make too many things happen. I think with young quarterbacks like him and as talented as he is, and he knows it, they try to make more plays than what they need to. If he's able to just stay calm, make the plays that are in front of him because you are going up against a historically great defense, then he will do his part and Alabama will at least mostly be okay or maybe in a better spot than they were against Auburn. Where do you feel like Bryce Young stacks up against two? Because right now Bryce Young is at the top of the Heisman conversation. One of the guys, I mean, C.J. Stroud and him right there. Where do you think that he stacks up against former Alabama quarterbacks? I think right now you can argue that he's just about level footing with him. I mean, statistically, he's about right there. I know Mac Jones had just, I believe it was a 78 percent completion percentage uh, last year for Alabama. So he's not there yet. I mean, not many players are, right? 
But I think that if you look at everything and the weapons that are not around him, the weapons that were around Mac Jones and Tua, he could eventually surpass their potential, at least in my opinion. All right, so let's go back to the offensive line because, you know, we just like talking about the big guys. Uh, <laughs> if you had to put this, like, on a scale of Thanksgiving sides, you know, to the one that nobody wants, to the one that everybody wants. So, like, pie that nobody wants, all the way to <laughs> mashed potatoes that everybody wants. Wow. Like, how bad is this offensive line matchup going to be for Georgia? I'm just glossing over The that. pie take is just not great. But it's, 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 it's tough. It's tough. I mean, look, Alabama, for them, here's the thing. You're playing it up against Auburn. We are not in week one, two, three, or four, right? Where like even the great teams like a Clemson or an Alabama or a Georgia are still kind of figuring things out a little bit. They had to replace their center with a guy that was not even on the two deep against Auburn, right? And those are the guys that are gonna have to go up against the likes of Jordan Davis and N'Kobe Dean. So they're really gonna have to hope that they're able to get it together up here in the next few days because that Georgia defense has not taken a single Saturday off. Take take me to the other side of it quickly. Then let's let's look at because we've given all this Bama talk. Like Stetson Bennett is over here just winning games, and I still don't feel like there's a ton of confidence in Stetson Bennett. So what do you see from him? What kind of game do you think he can have here? You know, Pollock called this one early that Stetson Bennett really is not like the player that people try to make him out to be. I think if he is who he is on Saturday, it's going to be good enough for them to win. Nobody has forced Georgia to score more than they need to this season, not just because of the defense, but also because Stetson Bennett has been good at taking care of the football. Another thing that he's great at doing that a lot of people don't necessarily give him credit for is improvising. When things are not there, Stetson Bennett, all five foot and whatever, 180 pounds of him, is able to scramble and make plays happen with his feet somehow. So as long as he continues to be the player that he's been that is proven time and again to be absolutely good enough for this Georgia football team. I was going to ask you that. Is he good enough? Because, like, if Stetson Bennett does not have the game that we expect him to, or that he needs to have in this matchup, do you feel like he's the guy in, in Georgia? He's, he's definitely the X factor here because, again, nobody has made Georgia have to score enough points on offense, and that goes both ways, right? They haven't played a defense that has really made them crumble on offense, and their own defense has been able to get touchdowns numerous times against other teams here. So as long as he just keeps a level head, similar to Bryce Young, right? Keeps a level head, plays his game, Georgia's probably going to win this one. Yeah, but, but think about the overall conversation. Like, you're down in Atlanta. You know the Georgia fan base. If Stetson comes out and lays an egg, is he even still, like, squarely the starter for the team? It feels like the, the fan base would be quick to jump off the Stetson Bennett pirate ship. Hey, I mean, Georgia fans might do that, but I would really caution them to just take a step back and look at where he's gotten you to this point. I believe he's thrown for 21 touchdowns and five interceptions. You've got a historically great defense. You have the type of team to where, hey, like, should your quarterback honestly be better than what a Stetson Bennett is? Yeah, but... He's good enough, proven time and again that he is, and that's that should be good enough for them. Can Congrats for what you got, Georgia fans. You're lucky to be here. Can we <laughs> all acknowledge how good my Christmas sweater looks in this, by the way? Like, you Wait, want to talk about, like, um, Harry, you'll just... be right back, but I do want everybody to sh oh, yeah, see yeah, yeah. the yeah. back of Fitz's Look at, uh, I, I can't even sweater. see this. You might just be looking at my butt, but so realistically. Move, move to your... Lovely. Move. There he is. Okay, yeah. wait. My, my, my uh, reindeer? There it is. It's pooping mints. It's pooping. It's pooping mints. Um, I've got a reindeer pooping mints. Harry, <laughs> you'll be back very shortly. Uh, before Harry comes back, our friends at Thinking Out Loud have a little conversation about Kirby Smart and Nick Saban. Yo, come on in. I'm Spencer Hall. This is Richard Johnson. We're just over here thinking out loud. It is SEC Championship game week. We got Georgia and we got Alabama. And Nick Saban sounds really excited about all of this. You know, this is a great opportunity for our team uh, to be in the SEC Championship game. They worked hard all year for it. Um, they're going to play a great team in Georgia. Georgia's the number one team in the country. They've been the most consistent team you know, all year long in terms of how they've sustained their performance and played at a high level. It's a it's a just special atmosphere, and the fan bases of both teams, regardless of who's in it, are always so passionate, and uh, I'm excited for our players to get an opportunity to play in it. And, you know, it's the first time, I guess, since we've been here that we've got a, a less of a portion of guys that have played in it. Spencer, do you think plucky upstart underdog Alabama has a chance in this game? You know, I know the experts say no. I know they're saying that that how dare this team challenge the inevitable Georgia Bulldogs. 
I think they have a chance. Okay. Sure. First of all, because... Bold of you, by the way. Bold. Brave opinion right there. Bold, I know. And I think the thing that gives me pause and makes me say, ah, not so fast, you do have a chance, is this. They have Bryce Young. Sure. Bryce Young is the best quarterback in the SEC. There is nobody, frankly, even close to his level of performance or comfort in that system. Also, he's the only chance they have because they're not going to be able to run the ball on Georgia. So go ahead. Chuck it up, young man. You're going to need to. I think there's a reason we haven't seen Georgia's defense tested on the outside. Mm -hmm. But I really, really want to see Georgia's defense tested on the outside in this game. Over the top, Alabama. Protect him with as many people as humanly possible. Jameson Williams, John Mechie, go to work on the outside. And let's have some fun, baby. Look, roll the dice. Roll the dice. Like You have nothing to lose. Absolutely nothing to lose. Additionally, by the way, very happy to see Nick Saban coming back to old form. This happy Nick Saban that I've seen for most of the season. I'm unsettled by I, it. I'm personally. disturbed and unsettled by it. I enjoy slightly miserable Nick Saban just downplaying things, keeping it quiet, right? You can see Kirby knows what he's doing. He's like, I've seen that look before. You're preparing. We don't keep it quiet, and we definitely aren't miserable every Monday night right mm -hmm. here in the office Thinking out loud, one more show for us, Spencer, next week. <sighs> Can't wait. 12 people. Yeah. I mean, those are, I like, I mean, we're kind of, I'm kind of friends with them, but like, I wish I was more friends with them because they're just so fun. Now, Spencer Hall is like one of those guys that you think about a lot before you text him because he's just not only cool, but he's also super smart, so you don't want to sound like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's that, that guy I you're like, that. I, I, I really want to be friends, so I, I got to make sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, That's that makes real. sense. All right, so you just heard him talking about the, the coaching battle. Right. And I do think that there's something there, though, because, like, there's never any pressure on mm -hmm. Saban anymore. I, I, I love the happy Saban, though, because happy Saban is a lot. <laughs> is, is it happy Saban? Like, he's, like, very, uh, very just basic. I mean, happy Saban, though, is at least you don't feel like you're going to get your head ripped off. But, you know, I, I think happy Saban – this year, we've seen him go off at Alabama fans. Curious that he went off at Alabama fans, and the Alabama fans were cheering him for going off at Alabama of fans. Of course, but, of course. But, but Kirby that. Smart, I mean, there's a lot of pressure to me. Like, that's one thing we haven't talked enough about. It, Georgia loses this game more often than not. We all yeah. know that. And this is a year where Georgia is clearly the better team. If they don't win, to me, it's because they'll get outcoached. And do you, I was going to say, do you feel like this is the year that Kirby is going to be able to get it done? I, he, yes, because they are better. I mean, in, in most years, and I'll never forget being at the national championship game that Georgia found a way to lo lose, and you just watched it and you thought, man, so heartbreaking. And I say it that way only for the context here, not taking anything away from mm -hmm. Alabama. But, you know, when you watch that on the, the field, it felt like such a moment of – of just the, the team that knew they were going to win won. Right. And, you know, Mike Golick Jr. that we work with on Rankings Reaction always says that there are certain teams, Alabama's one of them, that have you beat the minute they get off the bus because in your mind you just think, ah, it's Alabama. Yeah. That's real for a lot of guys playing the game. This year for Georgia, it isn't. You've got guys on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, you've got seven or eight guys that could be first-round draft picks, exactly. right? Like, so right. those guys don't have any – I, I think the Georgia – team comes into this saying yeah this is this all of the cooking came to this moment this is when we feast if they don't then Georgia fans are gonna be looking at Kirby okay I was gonna ask if Kirby isn't able to get it done this year if Saban somehow out coaches his out coaches him in this matchup this year what does that mean for Kirby? there's been so many coaching things happening on going on what does that mean for Kirby's future I mean that, that means that the the seat goes from like a little curious to wildly hot because Georgia fans don't have patience and you shouldn't you, you get such rare opportunities to, to win at this level I, I don't ever want to overstate you know the the panic of college football fans but I don't think it can be overstated like Georgia fans are going to go nuts if they right. get clearly out coached in this game because if you're a Georgia fan, like we know Elle and Trevor and so many of our friends. Oh, they're, yeah. They're they go hard. They're cautiously optimistic for the first time. I don't know. I, I feel like that would be uh, – if they do not win this matchup, nobody knows what's going on. Well, we do know what's going on around the game as there's going to be a wild and amazing concert. And to talk about that concert, we're going to welcome in a buddy of mine, Chris Young, joining us. Chris, I, I feel like we haven't talked in like a week, dude. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs> a you, week. Yeah, I know. Well, it's oh, I look, oh, wait, wait, wait. The reason he's saying that is I'm shocked you're not wearing a Raiders Christmas sweater. There, there is there, – there may on Thursday, for anyone that doesn't know, Chris is a huge Cowboys fan. I'm a huge Raiders fan, and I did tell him on Thursday that he would be eating his feelings. And uh, we haven't spoken since then. I was giving you a couple of days to, to let it uh, 
let it go. So uh, we'll we'll get to college football, though, my friend. Like uh, you're a Texas fan. Thanks, how long till how long till Texas uh, wins the SEC? Given the way it looks right now. <laughs> I mean, look, it's early for Sarkeesian, right? I think one of the mistakes you can make in college is, is trying to move on from a coach too fast, right? Um, we've seen a lot of games that they really should have won. They're going to have to figure that out, how to close out games next year. That has to be a point of emphasis for him. Um, because, you know, when you're beating Oklahoma and then you fall down like that and then you lose to Kansas, and then, you, then it's almost... You know, you can see them playing defeated when they walk off the bus. Um, very, very much kind of similar to your Alabama analogy earlier. Uh, if if um, Texas wins the SEC championship, obviously in the future, will they in fact be back? <laughs> uh, um, yes, if they ever do. Yes, I, I would really like to see it. Uh, okay. The last time, you know, I, I watched them really be huge and, and win a big game was obviously Vince Young. So. Um, oh, that was I, I was living in Texas at the time, but that was a while ago. I would like another, you know, come on, it's time. All it's of you people that have seen championships and remember I'm talking about how long it's been. My God. All right. <laughs> You're going to be performing at the T-Mobile SEC Championship concert in Atlanta. That's Friday, December 3rd, obviously. So you do a lot of concerts, like, you know, but does it hit different like this year after everything that it's taken to get back out on stage? Now you're out there with college football fans. Like, does it hit different when you're on stage now? For sure, man. Of course it does. And it was never, you know, taking anything for granted. But now you definitely can't take it for granted after, you know, really a year, year and a half where you didn't have live people in front of you playing a concert. And um, that's such a huge part of what I do. I love being in the studio and I love writing the songs. But, you know, being out there on that stage with Cameron Marlowe and Mitchell Tenpenny for T-Mobile is going to be awesome. All right, so you obviously, since we talked about Texas, have no real dog in the fight in this matchup. Alabama versus Georgia. Uh, I mean, you've seen what has played out this season. Give us your unbiased opinion. What, First of all, what do you think about these teams? But what do you think is going to happen in this matchup? Well, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I've, I've been watching you guys off camera for a little bit. And uh, the other couple guys who were on right before y'all were talking about they've got Bryce Young, they've got Bryce Young. Bryce Young didn't look like Bryce Young against Auburn. And this is basically a home game for Georgia in a lot of ways, you know? So I'm, I'll am i be interested to see what happens. I just think that that defensive front for Georgia and the defense in general is going to be too much for Alabama. And, uh, you know, that Nick Saban is a phenomenal coach. Nobody can say anything about that. Obviously, you were bringing up the, the game where Georgia lost a heartbreaker to, to Bama a couple years ago. But uh, the biggest thing for me is you look at that number one defense rating, you realize they play in the SEC and they're holding people under 300 yards per game. And literally, I think it's like 3.86 yards a play. Mm. Mm. That's By the way, if you like hearing Chris talk about sports, you should check out the quad, his podcast with his buddies, where they talk about music and sports. Uh, so look, we're burying the real lead here. Uh, you've got a busy schedule. Are you using your tremendous status and the fact that you're playing the T-Mobile concert on Friday to get into the game on Saturday? <laughs> oh, I'm going to the game, man. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to miss that. You know I'm a sports fan. <laughs> I got to. That, that, that's the most important. Would you, if either team offered you a jersey for the game, would you wear it in which one? I mean, I've got a lot of friends that are Georgia fans. I don't really have any sort of, you know – animosity towards Georgia. Um, you, you look at the fact that the most recent time Texas played them, they won. And the most recent time Texas played Alabama, we did not. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's just another reason for me to root for Georgia. Okay, so let's talk about the matchup once again because you talked about how Bryce Young did not look like himself against Auburn. Is there any player that you expect to come out in this game and absolutely dominate? I mean, I, look, I, I'm, it's going to sound like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. I do expect him to be more like what we've seen the rest of the season. I do think this is going to be uh, at least up in the front of this game before people start wearing down. You know, you look at Alabama's running back situation. They don't have, like, the depth that they normally do at that position this year. So running into that front like you were talking about Fitz I mean I don't know that they're going to be able to do it so it's going to be on his shoulders and I do think he'll show up because he you know has been in other games this season where he he was like all right I got to put everybody on my back at the end and um, you know I think that's highly important especially in, in college all right so who you got winning I already told you it's Georgia 
Okay. But they just said in my ears, make sure you get his pick. So I'm just being yeah, very yeah, kind no, for everybody. Good. Just clarify. Now, remember, guys, you can check out the concert, T-Mobile SEC Championship concert in Atlanta, Friday, December 3rd. Chris, as always, my friend, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Thank you so much. Enjoy the game. I'm jealous. I don't get to go, so uh, Christine will be, be there. there. Oh, so man. you guys hang out. Okay. You know, well, Some I'll of us you. have to work back here. But uh, <laughs> have a great time. Have a great show, brother. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, guys. Uh, always doing great work. And uh, you guys I think are... last time he was on the show, didn't we say that we were going to do like a, a, a group, like a, we were going to be a band? Uh, Is that what we said? Well, I that don't was know. like last year, I like mean, last college that, football season. That would probably work, but I mean, he he's a heck of a singer. Now so. he's like doing way bigger things. I yeah, feel like we yeah, can't. He can't always sing is. Him, yeah. Like he's, he's he's the best. All right. In the meantime, if there's anything I know that some of you may casually want to have a little enjoyment around the game, so to get some help on that, we're checking out Tyler Fulgham and Chris Felica from Bet with all of your Vegas advice. All right. Tyler Fulgham hanging out in the Bear Cave with my buddy Chris Felica, getting ready for, I think, a rather intriguing SEC championship game, Bear. Of course, Georgia's been the best team in college football all year long, but this Alabama squad, how good are they really? Hmm, what do you think about this matchup, just looking at it on paper? Well, I think that it's been a, been a little bit of an overreaction in terms of the point spread. I think you're looking at a number now at six and a half that I think uh, people saw the, the Auburn game on Saturday, and uh, Alabama didn't have Jamison Williams, who's their uh, best wide receiver in that game. And I think there are concerns about Alabama's running back situation. I think there are concerns about Alabama being able to potentially block uh, the Georgia defensive front. But this is still Alabama. This is still Nick Saban's team. They are a dangerous underdog who has been probably going to be talked up and poor mouth all week long that they have no chance against Georgia. While I agree, I think Georgia is the best team in the country, and they played like it all year long. They played very loose, very free. This game is all between the ear holes for the Bulldogs this week. This is the mental block game that Michigan got over this past weekend against Ohio State. Can Georgia do it this week against Alabama? Yeah, that's what intrigues me about this matchup. Neutral site, Atlanta, and the Mercedes-Benz Dome for the SEC title game. The first time all year that Nick Saban's team has been an underdog, and they're not an underdog by a point or two. It's almost a touchdown, six and a half. That's how good Georgia has been this season. And, of course, Alabama, like we saw last week, has had some slip-ups. Game they probably should have lost uh, last week despite that 4 OT thriller against Auburn. Meanwhile, Georgia's just been a wrecking machine. They've been an underdog only once, and of course, that was at the beginning of the season against Clemson when they absolutely uh, buried uh, the Tigers and sent them on a downward spiral this season. So I'm curious. Georgia, we know, doesn't need this game to get into the college football playoff. Alabama needs it certainly way more than the uh, Bulldogs do to uh, get into the college football playoff. So let's just make it official here. I think I know which way you may be leaning based on what you said there, but how are you officially looking at playing this Saturday SEC championship game? Right right now, sitting here on, on Monday at six and a half, I would be very tempted to take Alabama plus those points because um, I, I think like I guess I, I think you're looking at a game that prior to Saturday you're looking at the game being three and a half or four so you're getting about a, a field goal worth of extra value just because of a result on what we saw happen on, on Saturday afternoon it, it's crazy too to think back there hasn't even there hasn't been an upset in the SEC championship game since Alabama was an underdog against the Gators in 2009 beat Florida went on to win the national championship so usually we don't get outright out right upsets in the SEC championship game but 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 I, I think six and a half here sitting here right now feels a little high to me so right now I would lean towards taking Batman points I would as well I, I definitely would love it if it was a full touchdown if it was seven points of course this isn't the NFL's college so those numbers are slightly different but that total at 50 and a half although it seems low I mean let's just try and develop a game script here if we think the underdog uh, has a chance to bark which I agree with you uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide have I, that usually means a lower scoring game. Now, the difference here is this favorite is not a favorite because they have a dynamic offense. They're a favorite because their defense will squeeze you to death. So, Georgia doesn't necessarily bring that great defense or that great offense to the table. Alabama can, especially if they have Williams back. But I'm going to go under here thinking that Bama's defense actually shows up and plays very, very well. All right, Bear, let's get to some other picks yeah, I don't around have the exact, I don't have the exact numbers, by the way, on that, but but you're right. If you go back and look at Kirby Smart and these ranked big-time matchups, the trend has been low-scoring under games. All right, I 
I love hearing that. All right, real quickly, let's rip, rip through some other uh, games we'll see on Championship Sunday, or some other numbers, I should say, when it comes to the first quarter, first half. Anything stand out to you there? Um, I, I would kind of think a, a feeling out type of period under under would probably be the way to go. I don't, I don't think Georgia is going to be giving up a ton of big plays in this game. And at the same time, I would expect uh, the Georgia offense to have a little bit of trouble against the, still a very good Alabama defense. All right, great stuff. The Bear, Chris Felica from the Bear Cave. Tyler Fulgham out here in Vegas getting ready for what should be an interesting SEC championship game with Alabama as an underdog. Love those guys. You are watching SEC Championship Preview Show presented by T-Mobile. Kristen you know, Williamson and, and Jason Fitz here. And for the world, uh, by the way, you've been a long time T-Mobile. Oh, I've I been just, a T-Mobile customer since I was 12. That That's remarkable. See, I just made like the switch. my first ever phone. Like, I have been with a different carrier for over 20 years, and I recently decided I was going to take the plunge and make the switch. I am, uh, I am stunned. I am shook. I am in love with my T-Mobile. I get better service. I'm saving money. I've gone up and down the East Coast. It works. Congratulations. There's a lot of excitement. Welcome to the most wonderful side of A lot of, of free America. perks, too, man. Yeah. I'm telling you. Netflix. You get literally everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I've, I've got the Netflix. The Streaming Apple services. TV, all of it. It's all, yeah, it's all it's happening. Great. It's all happening. Uh, <laughs> Let's bring in our friend, Harry Lyles Jr., back to this conversation. We won't talk about T-Mobile. Um, but I do want to talk about what Bear and Tyler were just talking about because they think it's going to be a very low-scoring game. Do you agree with them? Yeah, I think it could be. I, I think the one thing that could sway that into it not being a low-scoring game is if Georgia kind of does this grind it out, just wear down the opposing offense like they did with Tennessee and Kentucky. Uh, I think that's kind of where we could see the floodgates open. But I think that would be like late in the fourth quarter to where it doesn't feel like a blowout, but the score might end up indicating that at the end. But that's a big maybe. Right. But, but hear me out, y'all. Like, doesn't that actually favor Georgia? Because it, the argument here is going to be that if there's one team we don't necessarily believe can manufacture a bunch of points, it's Georgia's offense, Harry. Like, I feel like if this stays low scoring, then that's Georgia that's all true. the way. No, 100%. I mean, the way that Georgia has won all of their football games, whether it's a grinded-out game or a blowout, absolutely favors them. If they fall behind early, I think that that is probably the only way that they're in trouble. But it's honestly been impressive to watch the way that they've won these football games. I mean, a lot of people say they love to watch a good defensive battle, which is a lie. Everybody loves offense. This is a <laughs> defense that anybody can genuinely enjoy watching. And, and I mean, that's... That's just that's just the fact. So I mean, again, I, I think there's very few ways that it could get ugly for Georgia, and I just don't necessarily see it happening. Gosh, that one highlight of them taking down DJ Uyangole is literally so incredibly <laughs> heartbreaking. I feel like I was like what five inches away from that, and I the whole thing that I've ever seen in my life. I, I feel you're paying for it, by the way. Like it, it, uh, they weren't doing it. It's the the one highlight. <laughs> All right, Harry, the, 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 rankings, for Christine. The, the rankings are about to come out. The penultimate rankings are coming out. Michigan's win over Iowa State. We're expecting Georgia to be, Georgia to be number one. You think Michigan slides to number two? Like, does any, any of this playoff action, you think, impact what we're going to see in the SEC championship game? It's tough to say, man. You know, I went to the mock selection committee thing that the college football playoff has every year. And the one thing that I think that people kind of have to keep into account here is that every single person on the committee has the same sort of general rules that they have to follow, but the criteria that they weigh them by is different. That's why some weeks we've seen that head-to-head -head matchups, they value that. In other weeks, they haven't valued that. So it, it's tough to say. I, I think that, you know, they showed us like, hey, right, Cincinnati, we put them at number four. I, I think that we could see that Oklahoma State might jump them. I think Michigan's going to jump them. So. It's tough to say what it's going to look like. I hope they put Cincinnati in, but, it, you know, it's a crapshoot at this point. Okay, so um, we love to talk about all of these possible scenarios on rankings reaction. So let's say that Alabama loses. Let's just say straight chaos ensues this weekend. Who do you think ultimately will end up in the CFP? <sighs> okay, let's say, so we're saying Alabama loses. Is that what uh -huh. we're going with? They get an L. And right, wait, also Alabama keep in mind loses. that Gary Barda did say that there is a chance that a two-loss team could end up in the CFP. He did say that. And we know that he's talking about Bama in that situation. Or Baylor. Baylor, a two-loss yeah. team that wins the Big 12. 
Well, man, if they put Baylor in, that's going to be a problem uh, for everybody. That's I, I don't know about that. That two loss, that's, that's, that is a big old Alabama asterisk right there. That is solely for them. They're, they're like, the re- like everybody else is shopping at like Target and Alabama shopping at like Gucci. Like that's, that's not the same. That's not all two losses are created equal there. So let's back that one that's up. Very true. That is very true. You don't think Oklahoma State is anything like Georgia? I don't understand. <laughs> I know, right? It's weird. <laughs> All right, let's get our picks in before we get out of here. Uh, Harry, who do you have in this one? I got Georgia. I think it's going to be a better game than people think. I think that Alabama is going to give them their toughest test. But it's honestly amazing that I've gotten to the point where I am not questioning the Georgia Bulldogs anymore. They've made it this far, and they've, there's no reason for me to question them now. Are you a Georgia fan? Like, I don't... You go hard for Georgia, right? Nah, no? you said Okay. Panthers, baby. Georgia State, all day. Okay. Real GSU. Yeah, of course. Of course you went to Georgia State. But you, like, kind of root for Georgia. Yeah, I mean, is there a conflict of interest between Georgia State and Georgia? You can't root Somewhat. for both of them? Somewhat. Okay. I'm, I'm throwing shade here. Nah, I, uh-uh. do, who you got, Fitz? Who uh, you got? Fine. I, I think Harry's absolutely wrong. I think Georgia is going to roll all over the tide. And, like, I'm just going to stay off social media if this doesn't happen. Georgia's going to win convincingly, and we're going to find out that Alabama's been a fraud all year, didn't belong in this conversation, and they're going to play wow. way, their way out of the playoff talk so we won't have to talk about a two-loss SEC, SEC team when they take a double-digit loss in the SEC I don't think it means that Alabama is a fraud. I feel like they've shown us exactly who they are throughout the whole entire season, and we've been like, are they really, like, when they were, like, are they really the number two team in the country? Like, I feel like Alabama being a fraud is, they, I feel like everybody just wants Alabama to be in the CFP, and that is why they are there. However, I will say, I think Georgia's going to win this one. I mean, it's going to be an absolute rolling. Queen sweet. We yeah. all take Georgia? Georgia. Georgia. Anyways. Georgia. <laughs> oh. I've never heard you sing, and I'm very glad that you just blessed us with that. Thanks so much, Harry. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Thanks, let's leave it to you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, Fitz can sing, too, so it's both of us. But, like, you can sing, too. You can be in our in our, in our um, group. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Harry, and thanks, you guys, for watching SEC Championship Preview Show presented by T-Mobile. We have a show in a few hours if you want to watch it. Rankings reaction at 8 p.m. And, um, yeah. Come back. Come hang. Holla.